All right, for more on this, we are being joined by Charles Kupchin, who is a senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations and was the former special assistant to the president and senior director for European affairs on the staff of the National Security Council in the Barack Obama administration. Mr. Kupchin, always a pleasure having you right here on DNA with us. I wanted to understand from you, among all the rifts we've seen emerging within Israel, is the growing rift between the Israeli leadership and the military perhaps the most concerning for Israel, given the war at the moment? Well, we don't really know exactly what has transpired in the terms of the rift between Prime Minister Netanyahu and the military. Netanyahu seems to be posturing some opposition to this idea of a humanitarian pause. But it's difficult for me to believe that the military would have introduced this major tactical uh, innovation to sort of pause uh, military operations along the main corridor leading from Kerem Shalom, which is where the trucks are going in, into Gaza without consulting with the government. So my best guess is what's going on here is, is that Netanyahu is trying to maneuver. He's number one, trying to respond to pressure from the United States, from the international community, from the international courts, to get more aid in there, but at the same time faces a lot of opposition from cabinet members on the right. So he's saying one thing in English to the international community, he's saying another thing in Hebrew to his domestic audience. That's the kind of bind that he finds himself in right now. Right, Mr. Kapshin, you've clearly uh, said that uh this ruling came out with consultation with the Israeli Prime Minister Ben Netanyahu. Um, another pertinent question is that how much will the pause help? Do you think that this tactical pause for a period of 11 hours uh, can actually be trusted? Because we've seen in the past that the U.S. made temporary pair was also damaged. Yeah, I mean, let me just say I don't know that Prime Minister knew in advance I'm just guessing that a major move like this would not be preceded with without on high, uh, getting the permission from on high. Uh, this is a major change because you can only get so much aid in by sea or by airdrop. Trucks can bring in many, many more tons of assistance on a daily basis. So to open Karim Shalom, to allow those trucks to pass into Gaza and to have safe passage into those parts of Gaza where the food, the fuel, the medicine is in great shortage, yeah, this can make a big difference. And to the degree that Israel is really under a huge amount of criticism, part of it is the high loss of civilian life, but a, another big piece of it is that aid has not been getting in to, at the level at which it needs to get in, this seems to be a response by the Israeli military to that criticism. Mr. Gupshin, just one more uh, you know, question I wanted to take from you. There, of course, there's no pause in the immediate future that we're going to be seeing. Uh, no ceasefire has been achieved since months and months of diplomacy has failed in achieving that. And of course, there's hardly any humanitarian aid which is trickling in compared to what is actually needed in the Gaza Strip. Now. Do you feel at this point the neighboring nations, at least Jordan and Egypt, it's time they open up their borders and let some of the Palestinians in into their land so that they can get some sort of regular life back into them? I think, I think it's very unlikely. I mean, if there's a country that has the space, that has the proximity to open its borders to the Palestinians in Gaza, it would be Egypt, but Egypt hasn't wanted to move in that direction, in part because it's afraid that Hamas would come into Egypt. It's afraid that the Palestinians, the Gazans that would cross the border and head south might never return to Gaza. One other thing that I think may be at play here is that the Israelis have been prosecuting the, the operation in Rafah for several weeks now. And it may be that the military is finding that it is able to make significant progress, that it is degrading the positions that Hamas has in South, in and around Rafah. That may be part of the rationale for what's going on here, that the Israelis can ease off on the military front 
in part because they are getting close to accomplishing their mission. That doesn't mean that a ceasefire is around the corner, but it may mean that at least there could be a light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to getting to a situation where Israel believes that Hamas has been so set back that it cannot again carry out anything like October 7th. Definitely a light at the end of the tunnel is definitely one that everyone is hoping for at the moment in any form as of as of now. Thank you so much for joining in. That was Charles Kupchin joining us from Washington, D.C. Always a pleasure having you here on World DNA with us, sir. Good to be with you. Bye-bye.